All right, what's going on guys? It's your boy uh, TCG Nistro here and today we're doing a dual avatar deck profile. Um, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. Um, deck sort of ass, but um, you can you can have fun with it. It sums out a bunch of different fusions and uh, it does a bunch of funny stuff. So we're just gonna go into it. So the way I play dual avatar is I play a going second build with triple Kokaku, so triple feet, triple fist, and double dual um, Keeper of Dragon Magic. So essentially, these are these two are your starters, where Keeper of Dragon Magic can discard one to summon out Fusion Deployment, and Yuhi can you know pop one to search the the, the, the dual Avatar Invitation. It's it's really like the the only actual monsters that you play. The rest of it sort of just like hand traps because uh, this deck needs as much support as it can get. So triple Fusion Deployment. To bring out the Yuhis, uh, triple Perfect Sync Ayun to uh, search out your dual avatars, uh, one Rota and one Terraforming to, you know, get access to them as soon as possible. Now the cool thing about Fusion Deployment is that Keeper of Dragon Magic can actually search it, and depending on which dual avatar you may also get in your hand, if you if you draw one, then you get to search the other, or if you don't draw any of them, you at least get to search Yuhi. And you, he can get you your dual avatar invitation. Uh, triple invitation, because it's really the only way to deck fusion summons. It's really, really weird um, that there is no other fusion card in the deck except for this. And it limits you to only fusion summoning for the rest of the turn. Like, normally, a lot of people would mix this with um, Invoked, because Invoked, you know, you norm some Alistair, go into Mechaba, you know, one card combo. But... It's like, it doesn't net you enough advantage when you go into Mechaba, because Mechaba is really easy to be over by itself, so you have to have something else with it. But if you already use your normal summon, then Mechaba, you know, by itself, it won't really do much, so you have to play a bunch of back row, and that's if you draw the back row, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, Triple Pod Desires, um, you could also play X-Jab if you want, but um, Desires is just better because you want to... Um, you don't really care about your deck. It's more like after you do all your searching, you can just desire to try to get those extra cards, right? So these are the only dual avatar trap cards that I'm playing in this build, simply because um, Ascendance, it's a, it's a really good way to like interact with the opponent. Um, you can discard it off of uh, Invitation and then during the next turn, you can add back a fucking dual avatar. Compact is sort of just here, just in case. And um, it can also, you know, banish Invitation, become an Invitation. Um, because this is a going second deck, you don't want to play that many trap cards, but you just want to have something to search off of uh, your dual avatar feet. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, now we're going to go into hand traps, uh, feet and forehead, uh, triple gammas, because you do activate a lot of spell cards. So in case, you know, your opponent does have something to um, to, to try to, you know, negate the spells, you, you have something to sort of like stop them before they uh, fucking stop you. You know what I'm saying? Um, called by Insufusion. Um, called by, you know, this deck loses the hand traps, so you have to play called by instant fusion. Um, just to get rid of problem monsters, you know, uh, you go into Thousand Eyes Restrict. Dual Avatar Defeating Evil. It's a way to get rid of cards going first because um, this deck needs as much destruction as it can get, right? So the, these two are supposed to be two more for, uh, forbidden droplets, but because this is um, a more budget build, or because I, uh, I, I'm, I'm missing my other two droplets right now. You can, you can just side out this droplet for another copy of Dark Row no more, and the deck would pretty much be the same. Essentially, the whole idea is you let your opponent play their entire board, and these two are, are fucking Lightning Storms. So triple uh, droplet and two two Lightning Storms, and essentially you let them play their board, and then you break it down. That's really, <laughs> that's really what this deck um, is better at doing than going first, because if you try to go first, your fusions are just too fragile, and you don't have a lot of recurring... Um, cards to really uh, make your your deck too strong or make your deck that strong so it's better to just go second try to interrupt them with hand traps like ash and gamma and uh, you know hit them with dark rulers like Gekis, uh fucking lightning storms dual avatar defeating evil with with you know tokens or the extra fusions that you don't need and then break their board down and then watch them cry that's pretty that's pretty much what this deck's trying to do Let's go into the extra deck now. Because of the limitations uh, on your fusion summons, you can't really do too much with your extra deck. Um, some people do play uh, Dragoon, but you know you don't you don't want to draw bricks. 
Not, not, not in this deck. Like, there's a lot of decks where it's like, you, you draw a brick or two, it's fine, you can discard it. This deck, nah. You pretty much triple down on these guys. You, you can, you can put them down to two if you want to, but I just like to triple down on them, just in case. Um, and also these guys, because you're playing the triple fusion deployment, you need at least one in your extra deck to, like, reveal for, um, summoning one from deck. So, if you have one on the field, you don't want to, like, limit yourself next turn to not having the other, you know? Um... Restrict to summon off of Instant Fusion and some Link Monsters just to sort of like have them around. And yeah, that's <laughs> that's pretty much the entire extra deck. Um, you, that's why I'm saying you can play X Drives in this deck because this deck doesn't really care about its extra deck that much, but it still sort of does. Now, the thing about X Drive, if you X Drive, you know, like this deck is made to go second. So if you X Drive and your opponent has a bunch of negates on the board, um, if you chain Droplet to them trying to negate your X Drive, you can send the X Drive as well and, and get, you know, that extra negation off of Droplet. So um, X Drive isn't the worst card in the world to play. It's just, you know, I know the card's a little pricey and it, it, it's it's risky either way because either you, you know, banish the 10 from your deck or you banish 6 from your extra deck, you know? So it's sort of like you, you're playing with fire anyway, so you might as well hit them where it hurts while you can. All right, so um, here's here's a side deck. It's it's not like entirely a side deck. It's more like a side deck concept where some of these cards are cards that I think you should side deck, and other, or some of them are like more based on the deck or like the meta that you're playing. If you're going to locals, you know, like some of these cards would be better than others. Like Lancia would be good against you know if you have like Infernoid at your locals, Lancia would be perfect. Um, Gamma Seal if you have Dragon Link and maybe you don't think Droplets enough. Gamma Seal, you know. Um, Nibiru's evenly matched does the same thing as the lightning storms or the, you know, it's sort of the same concept where you want to negate everything they have and then get rid of their board. Now, the thing about this is that this has to skip your battle phase. And so the reason why I, I don't main it is because you want that battle phase to inflict as much damage and sort of put that pressure on your opponent. But if you feel like your opponent's playing a lot of back row that you can't get over, you put in evenly matches and you swap in those gammas if you feel like they're playing something more back row heavy. You put in Cosmic Cyclones, you can even put in the third one. If they're playing um, something that's more graveyard based, um, you can play DD Crows, you know, Drytron, fucking Elich, Third Ash, you know, just in case you feel like they're playing Rituals or, you know, they search a lot, same thing. Uh, Impermanence, if you're playing Dragon Link or something of, of that nature. Millennium Eyes Restrict, the reason why we're playing Thousand Eyes over Millennium Eyes is because we're going second and we want to, uh, you know, swallow up those monsters. Um, but if you feel like, you know, they're, they're playing Hand Traps or, um, you, you don't want them to stop you and you don't have the, the gamma, you can go into the Millennium Eyes Restrict first. Uh, triple Nibs, because combo decks still exist, so just in case they do, just just um, remind them that, that this card exists and, you know, they'll feel sad after you drop it. Lancia's against Rituals, and as I mentioned earlier, um, fucking uh, Infernoids, because those those seem to be on, on a comeback now, so um, people are still playing. Um, Shadows as well, you know, stop them from, from, from schisming. And so it stops them from, from touching their graveyard, banishing cards from their graveyard. Uh, other, you know, going second cards that can, like, uh, you know, clear your opponent's board. Pank is pretty cool because he can choose, you know, he's like a two and one. He, either he pops something that, you know, that's pretty annoying, or he can just hit over a monster and then pop something, you know? So uh, he's a two and one. Gamma Seal, uh, just in case, you know, you need to tribute over shit. Uh, Book of Moon, if you <laughs> go face to face with a fucking Zeus, uh, Book of Moon's a really funny card. Uh, because, you know, they, they'd have to pop it off immediately or they're gonna have to watch it get destroyed by battle. It's, it's really up to them. And my control, because you do have some Link Monsters you can make, so just after you Dark Run no more, you can steal something, make a Link Monster, uh, really up to you. The, the core of the combo that you want to have here, um, essentially, Fusion Deployment and Ayun, they both search you your monsters. Fusion Deployment puts it on the field, you don't have to Normal Summon, and Ayun searches it to your hand, so, you know, um, j just in case, you know, uh, you already have something, you know, um, on the board, you just add it to your hand. And it also gets you extra tokens that you can use um, just in case you need to pop for your effect. So what you would do here, uh, it doesn't really matter the order that you activate them, but if you do have the droplet, I would suggest activating fusion deployment first. If they try to negate it, you chain droplet, you send fusion deployment, and you get to negate one of their effects, right? But um, if you don't have the droplet, then it doesn't really matter. Um, this is why having gamma is so good as well, because you know, both of these are spell cards and, you know, they both search you. So, um, if your opponent tries to hit you up with an Ash or something, you know, uh, it's, it's really good to have these. You want to Ayun to search for your Yuhi, if you don't already have them. And you want a Fusion Deployment 
you reveal either one of these two because his his material is Yuhi and his material is your Kokuku. I would suggest special summon out Kokuku first so that Kokuku can search your dual avatar um, ascendance. And then normal summoning out Yuhi um, after activating Ayun, because Ayun can search Yuhi, normal summon him out. And then Yuhi um, can can pop one of your dual avatar monsters to search the dual avatar invitation. Now, the thing about that is that um, Ayun can summon out a token. And then Yuhi can pop the dual avatar token since it, te it technically counts as a dual avatar monster and add the dual avatar invitation from your deck to your hand. Now, after you have the invitation, the card that you searched off of Kokuku, the Ascendance, you can drop it to Grave, and then you get to summon out three tokens. And now, the catch-22 here is that you won't be able to go into both your... You won't be able to go into both of them in the same turn because they both require three monsters. Now, you only get three tokens here, and you have two monster slots filled up already, which is why I suggest that if you already have Invitation and Yuhi in your hand, just to keep Yuhi in your hand so that you can get that fourth token so you can summon out both of them. But, you know, if not, it's whatever. You can play towards the situation. So if your opponent has a lot of front row that you want to get rid of, you go into Kangyo. If your opponent has a lot of back row you want to get rid of, you go into uh, Mitsujaku. So let's say that they have, you know, a, a big row front board or a, a, a big front row and we, we already used Droplet on them. We're going to go one, two, three which, you know, tokens go away, go into Kongyo, and then these two can go into uh, Armored Agio. Now, Agio can pop another monster that they control, and, you know, uh, and that's any time that it's special summoned. So if you revive it from Grave, if you summon it out from the extra deck, as long as it's special summoned, um, you know, you get to pop an attack with monster your opponent controls. And um, this is essentially not the the most broken board but it does give you enough advantage to attack over your opponent if you negated something if you don't have the ability to um negate something with something like a droplet i would suggest to go into the mitsujaku because he can not only return all your opponent's spell and trap cards back to the hand but he can also negate monster effects if you control two or more fusions so, um, he, he is the more optimal fusion, and while he's on the board, the first time each dual avatar fusion monster would be destroyed by battle, they're not. So, um, if you want to build a board of more negates, um, Agio is a really good card because he can negate um, the effects of monsters that are special from the extra deck. And now, you, you can actually just, um, you, you can go first with a hand like this because both of these guys do negate monster effects, but as, as I was saying earlier, this deck is a little fragile, so I do think it is better to like go second and just sort of like um, hope that you draw some card removal cards to uh, beat over your opponent, right? So that's pretty much like the first combo. It's like the, the combos in this deck are more of like creating a situation. They're not really about, um, you know, setting up, you know, boards with, you know, five, six negates, you know, it's, it's more about, you know, being a little more control-like playing around your opponent, right? You're gonna be doing the exact same thing. Now, this is why we start playing our Keeper of Dragon Magic now. Because Keeper of Dragon Magic, even by himself, is sort of really, is, is really cool. Because once you normal summon him, he can drop one card from hand, and he can search any fusion, any card, um, any normal spell card with fusion or polymerization in its name, which means he can search fusion deployment. And so after you summon him, he, he um, you can uh, activate fusion deployment, special now Yuhi for, uh, from the deck. And then Yuhi can pop himself to search your dual avatar invitation. And you're like, well, you know, you have invitation, but you don't have any dual avatar effect monsters. Well, now you activate his second effect where he can reveal a fusion monster from your from your uh, extra deck, right? So you're gonna reveal um, Kongyo and he can special summon one of the materials from, from your graveyard face down. So Yuhi would be special summoned in face down defense mode. And although it's in face down defense, you can still activate invitation bring out those three tokens and he would still you would still be able to use him for fusion summon now because he's not a dual avatar monster he's, he's sort of just stuck there but there is you know he does give us those extra um opportunities to go into our deck and to get the combo going in the first place so we you might as well play him anyway right so in a situation like this you wouldn't be you you'd have to choose between only going into the smaller fusions like um agio and um Ungio, or you'd have to go into only one 
Kongia, which I would suggest going into these guys instead, just so that you have, because one of them would be summoned by a monster effect, or w with an effect monster, I mean. So, um, Ungeo would be able to negate, you know, monster effects that your opponent controls, or that were summoned from the extra deck that your opponent controls, and he would still be able to pop because that, um, the, the pop effect doesn't, um, you don't need to use an effect monster to, to, to get that pop effect, so that's like the coolest part about it. Even if you, uh, get, just get Keeper of Dragon Magic by himself and no other, like, cards to, like, uh, no other dual avatar cards, you can still get out those these dual avatar fusions, you know, at the very least. So it's not the worst situation to be in. In reality, if you're not drawing any of these other dual avatar cards, you're probably drawing these, which is which might even be better because it might um, put you in a better situation to like break your opponent's board. All right, so going second with this deck, you do have a lot of options as to how you can actually go into some of your fusions, but there are other fusions that you can play. Another one is the Rainbow Neos. Now, the reason why you might not want to play him is because, you know, the sort of same thing like Dragoon, you're going to have to play bricks in your deck. You're going to have to play some Garnets to make him work. And if you don't want to do that, then you don't have to play him. But at the same time, he is so destructive. Like, it doesn't even matter if you get, like, a uh, Dark Ruler no more, which is why he, he, he he's better for, for a more budget build of this deck because, essentially, you get to normal summon out Keeper Drag Magic, Keeper Drag Magic discards one, like let's say you have another one in your hand, discards one and searches uh, Neo's Fusion. Now, if you don't have Fusion Deployment or any other cards in your hand, you know, then you get to activate Neo's Fusion, mill uh, Neo's and Rainbow Dragon, and special summon out Rainbow Neo's. And then Rainbow Neo's can send Keeper Drag Magic to send all um, monsters they control to the grave, or if you have a, 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 a spell or trap like the Field Spell, you can send the Field Spell, send all their spell and traps to the graveyard. And then if that wasn't enough, Neos Fusion protects it from, from, from its first time being destroyed, so it's gonna it's gonna stick around, unless it gets kaiju it's gonna stick around, you know? <laughs> and, you know, you mix that with a Dark Ruin no more, they're not gonna be able to, to respond to his effect to send all their monsters to the graveyard. So it's sort of just a funny way to, 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 to go second. Now, with Dark Ruin no more, you won't be able to inflict damage first turn, but, you know, you just clear the board, you know? But if you're going, uh, if you have a Droplet, You'll still be able to attack, or you know, if you have a uh, imperm, you know, whatever, um, you, you can, you can sort of like get around stuff without needing to sacrifice that much. You're still gonna have three other cards in hand after you use Keeper of Dragon Magic to go into Rainbow Neo, so uh, not the worst situation to be in. Another card you can play is uh, Supply Squad. I sort of forgot about it for a second, but it does work with the deck. So if you are going for a more budget build, um, Supply Squad works wonders. Um, if I'm being completely honest, the more you draw in your opening hand, the better, but that's usually how su Supply Squad is anyway. But we're just going to assume that, that you only have one, right? So you normal summon out Keeper of Dragon Magic, and as you know, it gets to search the um, the Fusion Deployment. And then Fusion Deployment gets to special summon out your Yuhi. And then Yuhi gets to pop itself to search your Dual Avatar Invitation if you don't have it already. And then uh, as it's, as it's uh, you know, sending itself to the grave, you get to draw one. And then, you know, the one that you drew, you know, uh, Invitation can use it to uh, bring out the tokens, you know, after using Keeper Dragon Magic uh, effect, a second effect to bring back the Yuhi. You know, drop the card you drew, Invitation. Three tokens, uh, then use these tokens to go into whichever dual avatar fusion you feel is appropriate, right? Um, if you get two supply squads, it's even better because you get to go plus, you, you, you essentially go plus one, but you know, because you activated supply squads, it's like, it's, you're still going minus, but you're going plus a little because you're going to have those extra cards, those extra trap cards or whatever type of build that you're playing. This is more for like a going first build because you can pop your own cards in your turn than during your opponent's turn. You know, um, they're probably going to attack your monsters or something. So you get even more cards off of that. So that's pretty cool. All right. So... I know, you know, I, I did a more pure build, but I just wanted to show you guys the invoke version anyway so that, you know, I don't get any complaints like, you know, how do you play this deck the other way, you know. I'm just going to show it off for you. Essentially, the whole concept is that you take out a lot of these um, going second cards like Droplet, you know, whatever, or you, you can side deck, uh, side deck some of them like Defeating Evil, but mo mostly you won't need them when going first. These are uh, not as optimal when going first, and you just want to, like, maximize your trap cards, you know, judgments, trap tricks, torrentials, just in case, crackdown, summon limits, really, really effective, but you know, that's if you draw it. Uh, judgments, compact, and return. 
And uh, essentially, <laughs> you're gonna activate Magical Meltdown, Normal Summon Alistair, search Invocation, link Alistair into uh, this bitch. So Alistair is gonna be in the grave. And then you activate Invocation, banish both of them, summon out Mechaba, and then uh, Invocation puts itself back into deck, and Alistair goes back into your hand. Look at that. One card combo, you essentially lost nothing, and you have a negate on board for at least one monster. Next turn, if you Norm Summon Alistair again, and you have like dual avatar fusions left over, then you can go into a copy of Augades, or into a second Mechaba, because Augades can like pop shit whenever your opponent special summons. Or you know, or you know, you can just go into other dual avatar fusions like the bigger ones if you drew into your fuel spell or if you drew into Kokaku. Essentially, you know, just heavy trap card build. You know, summoning out fusions bit by bit. Your ideal first turn board with the invoked version is these three. These three and at least one one card in hand like an Alistair, and at least one or two trap cards to like stop your opponent from playing. So because he can negate monster effects on the field. He can negate Monster Special from the extra deck, and Alistair, can, uh, uh, not Alistair, Mechaba can, can negate anything based on what you have in your hand. And then Augades would be a real good turn two, turn three card to, um, you know, stop what your opponent's doing or to, like, overpower your opponent. Th three negates, definitely not bad, and at least one interaction um, is a pretty solid, but that won't be every single time, you know. Although it's, you know, it's, it's your ideal board, it's not always going to happen. So, uh, yeah, that, that's why I sort of, like, stopped playing the uh, Invoke version, because it takes up your normal summon, and, um, you know, uh, going first and losing after, to, to, to a single hand trap, that's pretty much, like, that it's, it's, it's not good Yu-Gi-Oh, you know? You get ashed on the um, Alistair, and you're pretty much stuck, unless you already drew the Invocation. It's, it's really up to you how you want to play this deck. I would say, overall, it's a pretty fun deck. I think you can top a Locals with it. If you uh, if you do remote duels and you keep adding the beers to your hand from your from your extra pile, <laughs> but um, otherwise I would say this deck is sort of just casual. Um, I I personally wouldn't buy droplets just to play this deck, but if you have some of the stuff just laying around, I would say give it a shot. Just just see how you like it and see what else you can do. Um, you could also play Verde, go into Dragoon first turn if you want to, but a lot of these shit a lot of these shits like fusion deployment and uh, invitation limit you to only fusion summoning for the rest of the turn. So you'd have to have another engine in the deck to summon out the fucking Verte. And then you'd have to play the bricks on top of that of, you know, Dark Magician and Red Eyes. So um, if you like Garnets, you're going to like this deck. If you don't like Garnets, um, I would say I would say stick to a pure build. Because as, as, as tempting as it is to summon Mecha the first turn, it's not, it's not the be-all end-all. So yeah. Um, that's really all I got to say about Dual Avatars as a deck. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. This is your boy TCG Nistro here, signing out. Peace.